My name's Wade Wrecker. Welcome to Home Wrecker. Today we're going to pick right up where we left off. I'm going to put the second coat of spackle on this wall. If you didn't see the first coat of spackle go on, feel free to go back and watch all this video. We left it up for you. So you can go ahead and check that out and then come back here and be like, hey, now I saw the first video. And then you can ignore that part where I said if you didn't see the first video, go back and watch it because you already did tools we're gonna need for this episode same as last time we got the spackle blades here we got the spackle itself obviously we got a bucket full of water we got that with the water in it already and then we're gonna need a hawk and of course a little rag here is actually kind of cool this is the rag we used last time as you can see it's kind of like supporting itself it's like that flag they got there on that moon where it's like it's not really waving or falling or nothing but it's, like, it's just kind of like suspended there. That's not the same situation as what's happening with this one because this is not on the moon, obviously. This is actually like that because we had the spackle on it last time. So when that dried, it kind of like hardened it. Don't worry about that. We're going to throw that in the bucket of water. I was going to clear that right up. All right, so first step today, you see this? We got like bumpy stuff there, bumpy stuff there. You don't really want to go over that again with the spackle because you don't want to like build on it. So you could just take your little spackle blade, say goodbye to that. Say, hey there, where'd you go? You ain't there no more, you know? You just kind of chop that all off. You the chef, you making dinner, you decide what's going on the plate. There we go. Some people use sandpaper, they do wet sanding. I don't do that till the last step, like third coatish. I'll do two coats and I'll I'll kind of wet sand it all. I don't even do the regular sandpaper no more. I do wet sand. And then after that, I put the last coat on, wet sand it all again, and then we're ready to paint that. Now, keep in mind, you don't have to do things the same way I do. You could change it up a little bit. Maybe someone's doing something differently somewhere else on the internet, and you're like, I like that idea better. That's fine. You can go with that. I'm just kind of giving you an idea of what I do. That way you can find out like what's going on inside other people's houses without actually like spying on them to figure it out. I'm actually bringing my house to you via the internet and you can be like, okay, now I see what that guy's doing. I don't have to like do any kind of espionage to really get into somebody's house and see what other methods are out there. That kind of looks like a person's face, don't it? See how we got like the eye there and then kind of a mouth and a nosy thing going on there. It's like, hello, I just kind of showed up. I'm a spackle dude. My name is Mabel. I'm a male, but my parents named me a girl's name. How'd that happen? That's the state of America these days. Well, what am I going to tell you? People just naming people whatever they don't feel like. Mix in, mix in, mix in. So this second coat here, this is just like the first one, except... It's actually being done on top of the first coat, which is not what the first one was, but that's like the only difference. Use the same techniques. I don't really have much to say on terms of like what to do here because it is very repetitive. It's basically what you've done already. Maybe start fanning these edges out a little bit further. That way you're gonna be having like a, an easier line to sand at the end. So like you can go out a little bit further than before and just kind of thin it out as you get to the edge here. But overall, you're just doing the same thing. I want to say thank you to everybody who watched that first video. That was very kind of you. I saw when I looked last time, we were over 30 people watching it, which was really impressive. And I, I know like that's a big responsibility on me now because I got a, a widely grown audience. And it's like, I'm, I'm gonna respect that. I'm gonna do the best I can here and you know make sure I can kind of step in and say, hey, I wanna help you out. Let me know what your questions are. I can I can see what I can do, you know? 30 people, that's, that's a lot of people now. I mean, that's more people than you fit in one of them bus stop boxes, you know what I'm talking about? From the side of the road, right up there on Franklin. You can't fit 30 people in that bus stop box. Maybe two bus stop boxes, but even then it's like, I don't think you're gonna fit all 30 people in there. I mean, unless they are like laying people on top of other people, and then it's like, that's, 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 a, that's a bad morning. If you're waiting for work in a bus stop box and you gotta be like crowd surfing on other workers, it's like, I don't know. That's not the kind of life I wanna live. And I just, I, I think people would be a lot more comfortable if we had 30 split up within three bus stop boxes at least. And even that, I mean, it's gonna be cramped. 
it's going to be a little uncomfortable, but, you know, it's manageable that way. I say just get, like, maybe maybe six bus stop boxes. That way everyone's got some room to spread out. I'm not, like, a city planner or nothing like that. I don't want to give anyone the wrong idea. I don't work for the government. I don't know what the weight ratio is for bus stop boxes. I just know what I see, and, like, in my mind, I visualize things, so... I could be wrong, I could be right, don't don't quote me on any of that. If we talk about home stuff, that's really where my wheelhouse is. Alright, so now we got a lot on here. Next step, same as before, we're just going to scoop a lot of that off. Okay, again, this is mainly confidence. You just put that blade up there. Bring it down. Wipe that on the side of the hawk. And then do the same thing up from the bottom. All right, so what I'd like to touch on now is just a little issue we didn't really get to address last time, and that's proper work attire for the situation. Obviously, when you're working with spackle, that ain't like the cleanest of stuff. You might be able to get this stuff on you real easy. So you don't want to be wearing like church clothes or something like that. No shirt and tie. Leave that at the office. What I do is I just get old clothes. This shirt I've had for years. I got it at a NASCAR race, Jackson Hewitt Tax Service. Dummy well. Still doing me well. Works great as like a working shirt. I don't mind if I get some on here because it's like it's not a shirt I wear out in public all too often anymore. These jeans here, I did not buy them this way. I know that can be confusing because kids these days, it's like, oh yeah, we buying the ripped jeans. I don't know, can you see this on the camera? Where I got like some holes in my jeans there. I didn't buy them this way. These were bought like as regular jeans, no holes except for the three that are usually there unless you're counting the pockets in which case that's seven. But over time, like you wear the jeans, you're going to get some holes in them. You save those jeans. Don't throw them out because they'll be good for like working around the house. And then these shoes, I don't know if you could see those on there. Uh, same deal as the jeans. I just, I wore them for a while and then I kind of, I wore them out. So it's like a little fashion show for y'all. Get an idea of what you should be wearing if you're going to be doing this kind of stuff. Just so you don't get your nice clothes on messy and whatnot. All right. Back to it. So the rest of the second coach, basically same old, same old. You know what you're doing here, so we don't have to really go over that again. Things don't really switch up till coat number three, and we'll get into that. What I do want to talk about today, though, is how I put away my spackle. I like to clean it up. You see what I'm doing here? I'm making sure all the spackle gets back in the can. Don't let any of it escape, because you never know what it's going to do. Go buy a loan for like a, a Jimmy John's or something. Who knows? And it's not going to do that. I'm just kidding around. I scrape off the sides of the bucket, kind of smooth it out. You see what I'm doing here? I'm taking it off the sides. I'm making sure everything's nice and flat in the bottom of the bucket. Then I'll take that plastic. I'll put that plastic back on top, make it look nice and neat. That way when I open it up, it's like a pretty new can, even though I know it ain't. When I put the lid on, if you leave any fingerprints on the lid when you close that thing, I say wipe them off. Usually you got to grab the rag, get some water in there, make them disappear. And the reason I do that is because like you never know what someone's going to use as a murder weapon. And it's just best not to let yourself be implicated for any crimes you didn't do. You know, playing it on the safe side. Anyway, I'll see you next time. Thank you all for watching. Good luck with your home projects.